Um, I read in the comment section for one of your videos, and somebody mm -hmm. said, "Nice not on G Unit no more because he was the dopest lyricist in G Unit." Let me ask you this: Do you feel like you a better spitter than Yeah Yo Buck Fifth and all those guys? Um, they they my bros. You know what I mean? Everybody got uh, everybody has. What made G Unit special was everybody was different, but everybody was on the same same path. You know what I'm saying? They 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 were different as as far as the flow goes, but they were always on track when it came together. When they came together with a record, you know what I'm saying? So, um, I I, I believe I'm better than. 99.9% .9 of the niggas in the industry. So, you know, that's the question right there. I'm going to answer that. Yeah, hell yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> but my bros, though, you know what I mean? We all came from the same same tree, you know, the same cloth and all that. But, yeah, yeah. man, I, I definitely feel I'm one of the best to ever do it. You know what I'm saying? And I'm going to keep on going until people understand that. You know what I'm saying? Did, did did Fifth ever make any promises or assurances regarding your career that he did not fulfill? Nah, nah, man. Fifth was Fifth was solid, man. He was always one hundred. Um, he always had a plan. You know, um, the plan was about to get executed, but um, you know, unfortunately, you know, it's business politics part of the thing where uh, G Unit had got dropped from Interscope. You know what I'm saying? So once that happened, everything. Everybody who came on, but that's not Yayo Banks and Buck. They got everybody contract got terminated. So you know, um, it was just part of the business. But we was we was actually working on the uh, infamous G Unit album mm. uh, that was coming when that happened. You know what I mean? So the plans was there, and you know we was about to execute it. But a lot of things happened. Prodigy went to jail. You know, a lot of things happened. You know, so I remember that time. Um, they they Mob came out with some good records with G Unit. They also mm -hmm. came out with a couple of records that sounded more towards G Unit rather than mm -hmm. that forty first side sound that we come. Mm -hmm. Did you ever, when you was in the mix and all that, did you ever feel like maybe Mob was moving too far away from their New York roots when they got with Fifty? Oh, um, not really. Not really. What was the song was, Party something? Yeah, it was just the sound was yeah. through the people. It was different because it was a G unit sound. You know, Mob Deep can fit in anywhere that has real, real street music. And that's what G Unit was. But G Unit was just like the mob, but it was just like a different a different type of angle and a different branch of the different mob. polish on the beats, more built for mainstream appeal. Yeah. The sounds was a little bit more brighter. Pretty much, it was a combination of both. What 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 Fifth was doing, he he took things from the mob, but he enlightened it so it could be on the radio. You know what I'm saying? It could be on the radio at all times. It can go to MTV and VH1, reach places that the mob couldn't reach with their music because their music was just so dark. Um, you diss Rick Ross on the song "Respect the Gang." <laughs> and you diss Nas on a song called "Fuck You." That was with Mob Deep. Was any of that personal for you, or, or you uh, were just riding for the team at that time? Yeah, man. You know, once again, you know, you know. Shout out to Raw. Shout out to Nas. You know, those those were back in the day things. It was pretty much a competition. That's all it was. It was never like that. That type of beef was never serious type of beef because um. Like I said, it was more of a competition thing, especially with Nas. You know, Nas was like, that's 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 Havoc and Prodigy's brother. You know what I mean? They 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 grew up <clears throat> with Nas. So it was more like a friendly competition with with with, with the Nas thing. And I'm I'm like that. I'm I'm if I'm around with you and you're not gonna just take all the heat and I'm jumping in that thing, you know what I'm saying, and that's what it was. I just jumped, that, dove right in, you know what I mean. Once, once, once I heard, oh, this is what's going on. This is who, this is who. I'm right on it. I right, say no more. I got something for them, you know what I mean. And with all that trolling that Fifty did, did he ever, did Fifty ever directly come to you 
and say, I want you to go see this guy? Nah, man. Nah, because Fifth, fifth knew, Fifth knew we was a, uh, uh, like, we was really, really about that kind of life. So it really wasn't like, Fifth really was never worried about none of these dudes. Like, he was never panicking, like, oh, something got to be done with these guys. He just used to laugh most of the times, like, man, these niggas can't fuck with me. You know what I'm saying? He knew he had an army. You know what I'm saying? He had an army. He had an army of street dudes. You know what, what was I mean? one of the craziest or wildest stories you have from being around G Unit? We used to talk to uh, Lindsay Lohan. You know, shout out to Lindsay Lohan and stuff <laughs> like that. And um, it was funny. <laughs> one night, uh, it was just me and P in the studio. This was crazy, too. We wasn't doing anything. Like, it was just one of those regular days. We we was just in the studio. Engineer didn't show up. So now we're bored because we like, damn, we need to record. And there's nobody here. And he gets a text from Lindsay Lohan like, hey, I'm in town. Um, what you doing? We're like, Ooh, Wait, who got a text? P? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah okay. Yeah, yeah. So he got a text like, you know, <laughs> you were down and shit. So we're like, oh, shit. All right, we there. So P like, yo, fuck it, let's go. I'm like, damn, so we not even dressed. We had like like hoodies on and all that looking crazy. Tim boots on, we looking crazy. So P like, man, fuck that, we going. We get to the spot. It was at Bungalow 8, man, in, in the city. And um, it was a costume party, you know? So when we showed up, these guys were looking at us like, it's they insane. There is no way they're getting in there. You know, even the bouncer was like, y'all not coming in. So I'm like, now I'm beefing with the bouncer because I'm like, nigga, you know what the fuck that is? Right. You know what I'm saying? He like, I don't care who he is. I'm like, nigga, that's Prodigy from all things. He like, I don't give a fuck. Now me and him is going at it. So P like, yo, nice, chill, chill, chill. I'm going to handle this shit. He texts her like, yo, I'm outside, but niggas ain't letting us in. She's like, oh, shit, say no more. I'm going to send my security out there. Man, they came through and parted it. It was like Moses parted the Red Sea. Everybody just opened up. They walked out like, where's Prodigy? Mom, D. It's like, yo, we right here. He's like, follow me. And uh, now I'm talking shit to the bouncer. Like, yeah, I told you, you bitch ass nigga. So now I'm feeling good. I was like, oh, this is crazy, man. We walked in there. It was star studded, man. Oh, they had Quentin Tarantino in there. It had uh, <clears throat> the RZA, uh, Kaye. Um, I mean, so many actors, man. Aaron Carter, a uh, whole bunch of people was in the building, man. Back then, I used to look like Fifth a lot, a lot. You know, because, you know, I had do-rags, you know, the do-rags and all that things. And the way how I talk and all that, people used to always say, like, yo, you look like you related to Fifth. And I used to get, P used to always play these kind of games. So when we got there, he introduced, he's introducing me to Lindsay Lohan and all her friends as 50 Cousin. He was like, yo, you don't know who that is? And they're like, nah. He's like, that's 50 cousin, look at him. <laughs> <laughs> he starts going crazy in the party, like, oh my God, it's 50 cousin now. Now girls is coming up to me, hugging me, like, oh my God, your cousin is the dopest. And I'm just like, I'm looking at P and he's laughing in the no. corner, he's laughing. And I'm just like, oh, this man always do that, man. Cause one time before that, he had me signing autographs in the McDonald's. People thought I was young Jeezy. It was crazy. Like, <laughs> they, they thought I was Jeezy because P told him. That. And this one so, particular uh, female just kept jumping on me. And um, it came out, turned out to be Ashley Simpson, man. I didn't even know who, who it was at first, you know, because she had the whole, you know, the whole get up. And I'm like, oh, my God, wait a minute. I'm like, uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm dancing with her and all that it was it was crazy man it was a crazy ass night like the shit was crazy <clears throat> i've never seen so many actors and actresses and all in one spot like at the same time it was phenomenal we had a great time 
Uh, that was one of the dopest experience, man. You know, I, I started dating that girl at that time. You know. Wait, you about, you, wait, you about, you about Ashley Simpson? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Man. Wait, hold, freeze, hold on, bro. So you saying you started dating Ashley Simpson? This is the same Ashley Simpson, Jessica Simpson's younger sister. She was yeah. the one on Saturday Night Live that had the yeah. little malfunction with the musical equipment on Saturday Night Live. That mm -hmm. Ashley mm -hmm. Simpson that's married mm -hmm. to Diana Ross's kid mm -hmm. now. So you, yep. how long did y'all date? Um, couple of months, man. Um, some things happened where uh, we went on the radio and Angie Martinez had called Wynn because we was trying to keep it very low key, you know. Um, and Angie Martinez somehow, I don't know how she found out, but she found out that uh, P was messing with Lindsay Lohan at the time. And she brought it up and you know, some jokes started flying and it got real stupid, you know, it, it just got crazy. And um, she was listening, you mm. know, Lindsay was listening and she was pretty pissed and, you know, that's her friend. And they just kind of like, you know, kept it moving on us. Was so. there ever a time where you felt like New York or the industry at large looked at you like more of a goon rather than a lyricist because of all the disc records? Yeah. Yeah, I mean that played a that played a major part in it because I was really on that type of time. So not only I was would have this records, I'll be the one out in the street in the hoods. I I'm pulling up to people's neighborhood, you know, um with a van. I had a van with my face wrapped on it that had a, a, a big picture of me, a big picture of fifth, a big picture of half a pee. On the van, on the side of the van, you couldn't miss it. And it had my name, Nice Future, it had G unit, it had infamous all over it. So I'm pulling up in people's neighborhood, they automatically know it's me now. Like, you know, I'm hopping out, I'm gooned up, I got my goons with me, and, and we're going everywhere. You know what I'm saying? And uh, yeah, a lot of people looked at it like, oh yeah, that's 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 him. He's the goon, he's one of the goons, you know what I mean? He could rap, but he's one of the goons, you know? And um, I didn't understand the business enough to know that it <clears throat> you can't be two, you can't be both. You know what I'm saying? See, were you the artist? Yeah, of course you will get busy if you're back against the wall, but you can't be the goon and the artist. You know what I'm saying? It's not really a good look for you. Because there's certain you know? certain certain offices you can't get into with a reputation. Yeah, yeah, like yeah, 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 yeah. They'll be like, "Oh, that's the goon. Leave him outside." Right. He's, he's, he's gonna he's gonna start some shit. You know right. What I mean? so, yeah, you had, I, I, I went through it. I experienced it, and I learned. You know. You had some major moves uh, over the past years. Uh, you dropped a project with Havoc, and then you hooked mm -hmm. up with Ito. Uh, you part mm -hmm. of Front Row Regale now. Mm-hmm, mm -hmm, front and row. How did you hook up with, with Ito? Um, pretty much, uh, shout out to paperchaser.com. That's my brother. Um, he used to be, Paper Chaser was so dope, man, because anything I put out g and wise he always had his hands on it, and he always used to post it. Like, he would post, you know, he was like the king of the, he is pretty much the king of, of underground hip hop music. Mm -hmm. And he, tell, uh, he hits me one day and he's like, man, you know who I would like to hear you do a song with? Um, Ito. Ito. He was like, yo, man, I'm telling you, man, get a beat from Ito. And I was like, you know what, fuck it. Tell him, send me some shit. You know, and uh, he sent me some joints and I was like, oh, shit. I was blown away. I'm like, I called him right back, like, yo, man, this nigga can make some beats, bro. That'd be crazy. You know? He was like, yo, not only he can make beats, he rap that dope. I'm like, come on, man, this is some bullshit. So I'm like, all right, fuck it. I wound up getting doing one of the songs. Uh, we connected for a little bit, and then we lost touch. I don't know what made us lost touch, but um, we lost touch for a couple of years. And then um, last year, when I started doing the uh, project with, with Havoc, Chaser came back again and he brought it up again. Like, yo, listen, well, after you finish doing the project with Havoc, you should do one with Ito. And I'm like, yo, you know what? Fuck the hell yeah. This nigga Beach was crazy. And um, he got 
he's like, yo, I'm gonna let him know right now. And he hung up and he, he called him. And um, then he called me back with me to on the phone. And I was just like, yo, what's up, bro? It felt like the love felt so genuine. It felt like I knew him all my life. Like once he got on the phone and we got to chopping it, it felt like I knew him all my life. I'm like, oh man, I can fuck with this guy, man. I do it for them niggas who locked in the Glock spin. How the tenant hoopty with stock rims, rock swing right from my neck. Tell shorty hop in, shopping for whatever you want. You can't stop him. I'm top ten, maybe top five when I chop pies. Drop five, park in front of the trap with the cock eyes. Stop five, cause it be slow. When I lock eyes, shot fly when I read that of me black fly. When I got out to Rochester, the energy that Rochester had for for, for underground hip hop, it, it was like a breath of fresh air coming from New York City. New York City is really kind of like it's a few people that love still love it, but the majority is on drill music now. You know what I'm saying? Um that's that's kind of the thing out there. Out here in Rochester, it's straight hip hop, like, you know what I'm saying? It's like people still listen to like Nas and, and, and you know, real spitters. It was like, it felt like I was in 97, 98 when I come, come to Rochester. So I just loved it and we just started working and here we are, man, front row, man, front row gal, that's the movement. Shout out to front row with gal. Yeah, um, man, uh, Mark, everybody, squad. You know what I mean? Pup, what's up, baby? No, okay. Dan, what's up? You know what I mean? Oh, you've been grinding so long. Where does that resilience come from to keep pushing, even while the sport has gone through so many changes since you first came out? Um, you know, I feel like my mission ain't That's done, right, man. Um, you know, you know, it was times I felt like, you know, giving up and stuff, but it will always be somebody somewhere would always say something to me that'll keep me going. It's like God was sending like, I, right, I'm gonna send these people where anytime you feel a doubt, I'm gonna send these people to, to uplift you and keep you going. Because it'd be weird, like, you know, um, but the first thing that, that kept me going for a lot of years is when Eminem said I was dope. When he said that, I was, my head was through the clouds. Cause right. I'm like, this is Eminem. He's saying I'm dope, it's over. You know, um, so when I started feeling a little discouraged, it would be like somebody from like Africa or something would hit me and be like, yo, bro, I'm listening to your music now. Like, you're one of the best I ever heard. And I love you, man. Keep on going. And do, boom. you know, it was like always like those. I get those type of messages all the time. And anytime I feel down, I see these messages and I'll be like, well, you know what? My job ain't done. People still out here is still rooting for me and still want me to keep going. And this is who I do it for. I do it for the people, you know what I'm saying? Do you ever recently have the urge to diss somebody on a record, but just said, nah, and just pull back? <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, you always gotta stay sharp, man. This is, this is a sport, you know what I'm saying? And this is a sport that I'm not going around looking for it, but best believe, Anybody come at front row or, or, or E or, you know, anyone or Jay Black or anyone on the squad, best believe you go hear me. You know what I'm saying? I'll be right back. You know what I'm saying? I'm coming right back. I don't, this thing is like my playing ground. It's my play field, man. You know what I mean? People don't really want to play with me with that. You know what I mean? Got you. And so what's next? Uh, for nice, I know you got the album coming out with Ito. What do you see mm -hmm. for the besides that album? What else can we expect 2022 from Nice to Future? Uh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. More projects, a lot of EPs. I got an uh, EP with Ho Venisi coming. Um, and that's finished pretty dope. Um, it's really like more like more like kind of storytelling on that on that EP. Um, super dope. Um, uh I got a I got a solo EP coming produced by Hovenisi himself. Um the whole thing produced by him called Masterpiece. Oh man, that that is coming out pretty like a masterpiece. Um I also got a project with Seth Silencer coming out, the silent one. I got a joint with uh Jake from Next Records, and we doing the front row uh compilation album. 
Mm -hmm. we, we about to start working on that. We we already started though. We we got some right. Appreciate that. that. Nice to future. Thank you for joining us. It's been my pleasure to have this talk with you. And I hope we're gonna talk yeah, again yeah. soon. Oh yeah, man. Anytime, man. You know, the mess with you, man. Shout out to Mike Powers, my guy, man. You know, it's an infamous thing. You know what it is, man. Front row thing, man. You know what I mean? The whole squad, we in here, baby. Anytime you ready, though, let me know. I'll be back on this joint. We can talk some more shit. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to hold you to that. What the fuck was popping is your boy Mike Powers. Mike Powers.